This is a fantastic question that I don't think a lot of people realize the answer to. So what law was it that Cain actually violated in the Torah? Because again, the whole Cain and Abel thing is proof that the Torah, or at least most of the Torah, existed and was known by the people before it was actually given on Mount Sinai. So let's check out the story real quick in Genesis 4, and then I'll show you guys what's going on. Scripture tells us that Cain brought the Lord an offering of fruit from the ground, and Abel brought the firstborn of his flocks. Then it just tells us that the Lord accepted Abel's offering but rejected Cain's, and Cain was angry and slew Abel. Now, if you read Leviticus chapters 1 through 5 and then numerous other places in the Torah, you see that no matter what kind of offering you give to the Father, whether it be a first fruits offering, a sin offering, a burnt offering, doesn't matter. It needs to be without blemish. I took a screenshot of just some of the times. It says, without blemish, without blemish, without blemish. Now, the reason that is, is because God gives us everything that we have. Right? If you have a house, God gave it to you. If you're rich, God gave it to you. If your cattle or your goats or your chickens created a bunch of offspring, God gave it to you. If your vineyard grew, God gave it to you. All the fruit of the ground, all the animals, everything that we have, God gave us. And he only asks for a very small portion back in return. But in every instance, he says, if you bring me an offering, I want it to be the best of what you have, not the leftover garbage that you don't even want. And that makes sense to me. That seems pretty reasonable. So we're left with two options. Either God hates fruit offerings or we're not understanding something in the scriptures. And if you study the Torah, it can't be the first option. In Leviticus 5, God asks you to bring a bull offering. He says, if you can't afford that, bring a lamb. If you can't afford a lamb, bring two turtle doves or two pigeons. And then a little bit further down, he says, if you can't afford two pigeons, then bring me fine flour. So we constantly see God making provisions for the people based on what they have available to them. But again, whatever you have, it needs to be the best of. That's why it's fine flour, not leftover crappy flour. So this has to mean that Cain's offering was not the best that he had to offer. And if we read in the Apocrypha, we can confirm this. In the book of Jasher, it tells us that Cain brought of the inferior fruit of the ground to the father as his offering. A lot of people don't like the book of Jasher, but it's mentioned twice in our mainstream canon. Not to mention this is the only interpretation that tracks with the rest of scripture. Cain didn't bring the best he had.